Hello everyone! It's nice to see that we're finally getting to the good parts. So, this is going to be module number 3, Quality Control. As you know, Minitab is a highly powerful statistical program, and mastery of it for quality control is a key advantage for any quality and manufacturing engineer. This is going to be, without a doubt, the best module that we have made to date. But, it's going to be a long one. Quality control is not something that's understood in one day, but this presentation will hopefully help you make the most of it. So, without further ado, let us start. First of all, as you know, this is part of the Quality Engineer and Specialized Manufacturing Engineer course presented by Kusum. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them through info at kusum.mx or through a comment on this video. My name is Andres and I will be your instructor for today. So, today we're going to be talking about capability analysis, which is called usually in engineering circles as CPK versus PPK. We're also going to be talking about control chart graphs, how to analyze your CPK, PPK, and control chart values. We'll be creating Pareto charts for analyzing main issues. We'll identify data distributions from our, our sampling. And we'll also be creating capability studies for non-normal data. So, as you can see right now, this is going to be a full module. It's going to be a little longer than usual, but it will be well worth your time. So, we're going to be assessing our process performance based on variables which can actually be measured and quantified. Note that we're talking about things that can actually be measured. For example, tension forces, weight, and length. They will actually give us a number which we can plot against. Okay? Based on this, we're going to be determining two main indexes. The first one is the process capability index, which is called CPK, and the next one is the process performance index, called PPK. There's a statistical difference between one and the other, but in order to keep things simple, we're just going to be using the CPK for normal data, and we're going to be using the PPK for non-normal data. PPK is usually called the whole process variation index or capability index, while CPK tends to be more for subgroups. But for our purposes right now, CPK for normal data and PPK for non-normal data. You'll be able to use this distinction wherever you go in the industry. Now, let's understand what CPK and PPK mean, okay? So CPK is a numerical value that allows us to know how many times our process variation fits inside our process tolerance. So this is a mouthful. <laughs> so let's, let's break it down for a bit, okay? There's a simple analogy. Let's assume that you have a parking space and you have a car and you want to fit your car inside this parking space. So if your car is the same size as your parking space, then you can fit your car once inside the parking space. Now, if instead of a car you had a motorcycle and your motorcycle is about one-third of the size of your car, then you can now fit three motorcycles inside your parking lot. So on our previous example with one car fitting only once inside a parking lot, we would call that a CPK of one, meaning I can fit the process once inside my spec. My spec being my parking lot and my process being simulated by my car. If I switch over to the motorcycles and I can fit three motorcycles inside that same parking lot, my parking lot is still my specifications while my motorcycle becomes our, my process variation. Now start to observe something really important here. As your process variation becomes smaller and your process tends to group up on one value, instead of having a car, you start to turn your process into a motorcycle. The distribution of your data becomes so small that it increases the amount of times it can fit within your specs. And that actually helps you meet the spec. Is it easier to park a big gas guzzling SUV into a parking lot? Or is it easier to park a motorcycle? Same thing with a manufacturing process. It's easier to put a small process within spec than having a really big process. And I'm not talking about big as in complex. I'm talking big as in spread out. 
as in sometimes it's at the 5, you're getting 5 inches, and then all of a sudden you're getting 15 inches. Well, that's going to be really hard to put into spec when compared to a process that is more stable around 4 to 5 inches, okay? Now, we're comparing right now our parking lot example. So as you can see, your car fitting only once inside the parking lot is CPK equal 1, and three motorcycles fitting once each inside a, a parking lot gives you a CPK of 3. Now, we're going to be going into an example of how to calculate CPK using Minitab. Okay? So most of the time you're going to be having a sampling size and that sampling size is going to be distributed randomly across your lot. So, let's say you have a manufacturing lot. Now, let's look at this example. You have a manufacturing process producing wooden furniture. As part of the quality inspection process, you randomly take two wooden parts each hour and measure their full length. This is recorded and reviewed at the end of the 24-hour shift in order to determine how the process behaved in terms of capacity. According to our quality documents, the parts can measure between 1.2 and 2 inches in length so that they will be acceptable and will be able to assemble in the next manufacturing section. So, we have highlighted the main indicators from this example. The first one is called the subgroup size, which means how many samples you take each time you go to the manufacturing line. If you only take one sample, okay, if you only take one sample, and for some reason that one sample is completely out of whack or completely out of spec with the rest of the population, that's going to impact you a lot. Now, if instead of that you take two samples, you can average those two samples together and they'll help to counteract the big changes between one dimension and the other. This is what's called a subgroup size. So, by taking two wooden parts each hour, I'm able to counteract the odds that I'll get a bad part that will turn my chart completely upside down. So, since we're taking two parts per hour during a 24-hour shift, we have a total of 48 data points which must measure between 1.2 and 2 inches. Now, we can grab our data and let's say we go to the manufacturing line and we execute this exercise so we now have 48 different data points. Note how we're creating a table that contains a time column and a results in inches column we want to be able to backtrack at what time we took those samples. So we have copied and pasted the information into Minitab and note how it says 12 a.m. and we have two results and then it says 1 a.m. and we have two results, 2 a.m. we have two results. So as you can see we took two samples at that time. That is why it has the same time in our column. Okay. Now let's go back over to our instructions and as you can see right now, we're going to be executing our analysis with STAT, Quality Tools, Capability Analysis, and Normal. Okay? So, we're going to be doing that just now. We're going to be clicking on STAT, Quality Tools, Capability Analysis, and Normal. Now, note that we're using the normal test. There's also a test for non-normal data. For now, we're going to be using the one that says normal. So, it tells us, Okay, your data, where is it arranged at? So we're going to tell it the results are in a single column called results inches and the subgroup size, we could either say 2 since we know it's number 2 or we can just say look at the timestamp. So if our time column at some point we took 3 or 4 samples, as long as we put place the same name, for example if I had typed in 12 a.m. 3 or 4 times, Minitab will be able to say, oh, okay, so this sample that was taken at 12 a.m. was a subgroup size number 4, while the rest of them are subgroup size number 2, and that way it can make a difference between what you sampled with a subgroup size of 4 and what was subgroup sampled with a subgroup size of 2. Now, as we were talking about previously, we have a lower spec of 1.2 inches and an upper spec of 2 inches. So we're going to be putting in that information right here and then we're going to be clicking on OK. 
So Minitab is going to execute our analysis for us. And as you can observe right now from the graph, it's telling us, okay, your process data that you summarized is the following. You have a lower spec of 1.2. You don't actually have a target. So we didn't tell Minitab, I want to be in the middle of the, pro of the specification window. I want to be on the top or on the bottom. And it's telling us what our sample mean is, how many samples we took. So we can see right here, we have 48 samples. What is the standard deviation of our process? And it's telling us our CP, CPL, CPU, and CPK. So what do they all mean? Well, CP is a, an older statistical concept for capability studies. We're not going to be touching into it right now. CPL is based on your process specifications, how confident can are we that we can meet the lower specification. CPU is how confident we are that we can meet the upper specification. So note how on our Instagram, our data tends to be distributed toward the left. That's why our CPU tends to be a lot higher than our CPL. So my process, the whole standard deviation can't actually fit inside my lower specification limit. That's why instead of having a CPL of one, which would tell me, oh, your process fits once inside your spec, I have a 0.60, which means I don't actually fit, okay? Barely only 0.6 of myself fits inside the spec. Now, CPK is the smallest between the CPL and CPU. So whatever is smallest for us is can I meet the lower spec or the upper spec? Which one is the worst case scenario? And that worst case scenario becomes our CPK, which right now is a 0 0.60. Now, our PP, PPL, PPU, and PPK work pretty much the same way. But remember, usually we're going to be using this for non-normal data. Okay? So for now, we're not going to be wor worrying about them. Now, Minitab also summarizes important information on the bottom. The following tables allow us to know, statistically speaking, how many parts, if we keep the process as is, and we run it for a million cycles, so we create a million parts, how many of those parts will be out of spec? Toward the lower spec, toward the upper spec, and in total. So, as we can see right here, it's telling us PPM means parts per million. So how many parts per million are going to be lower spec, below my spec? How many parts per million are going to be above my spec? And how many defects per total million opportunities will I have? Okay, now we're going to be going back over here. And as we saw, we have a CPK of 0.60. Okay, we already executed this test. And now, as you can observe, my process does not actually fit within my process specifications. So if I look at my graph right now, this histogram is telling me my process has this particular distribution. If I took this and tried to shift it over toward the right, it would barely fit once within my spec. That means that my process is too spread out. Even if I try and move my machine setup so that instead of having parts that are being made at around 1.40, I had parts that were being made at 1.55 as my process mean, I still wouldn't be able to meet the specs because my process barely fits once. If I sneeze, my process moves toward the right or toward the left and I'll have bad parts, okay? So in cases like this, the most recommended course of action is to find ways to minimize variation. Okay, if you can minimize the process variation, which means decrease the standard deviation and make it smaller, you will be able to better position yourself within your process specifications. Remember, you want to have a motorcycle. You don't want to have a big gas guzzling car because it will be a lot harder to park within your specs. So we're going to be closing this training session right now. Before you jump into part two of module number three, I want you to think about something really important, which is why you're watching this video right now. 
So why are you watching a Minitab statistical video? Okay, I want you to think about it really clearly because what we've been doing until now is teaching you how to use Minitab to execute simple statistical analysis, which is fundamental for you as a quality and manufacturing engineer. So the main reason most likely why you're watching this video right now is because you want to be the best. You want to learn how to use Minitab so you can show other quality engineers, quality management, manufacturing engineers, as well as the staff that you know what you're talking about and that you know how to give results. So if that's the reason why you're watching this video right now, feel free to go watch part number two where we're going to be talking about how to be preventive. Everything that we've done until now is corrective in nature, which means we're taking samples, we're analyzing the process, and we're executing based on the data that we're getting. But we're not actually avoiding issues. We're acting once the issue has already happened. So what we're going to be talking about in quality control, module number three, part number two, is how to monitor your process with a control chart so that you can execute corrective action before issues happen. That way you can be preventive. And that is your key asset as a quality engineer and as a manufacturing engineer. If you can avoid issues for your company, you'll be worth a lot more than if you're just monitoring the process and saying, oh, I don't know why this happened, but we now have two or three defective lots. So if you, if you learn your stuff, and learn how to use Minitab to execute analysis, you'll be able to exceed as an engineer. Okay? Well, my name is Andrew, and it's been a pleasure having you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach us out at info at kusum.mx. And if you'd like to subscribe or leave us a comment, feel free to do so, okay? So, talk to you later, and hope you have a wonderful day.